Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we started recording episodes virtually instead of being in the same room together. This created technical issues for us for many weeks. Our sound issues get better beginning with the pros and cons episode. In the meantime, we appreciate your patience with the sound issues that are present in this episode. Dialectical Behavior Therapy was created in the 1980s by Marsha Linehan in Seattle, Washington. Today, DBT is taught all over the world. We're two therapists who believe everyone can benefit from DBT skills. I'm Kate. I'm Michelle. And, and this, this is, is DBT and me. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> you might have just heard me. I was like, ready, set, go. And then I pressed I record. Know. And I think you guys <laughs> might have heard me say go. <laughs> right as I pressed the button on our microphone. And go. Go. Here we go. All right. So. Well, now, now we're cheerleaders. I don't know. Uh, we're, we're just tired. It's okay. It's true. <laughs> tired and it's warm in my walk-in closet and I don't do well in the heat but I'm hanging in there it's okay I am melting all right so today we're talking about a skill um that is a newer dbt skill I would say I don't think I saw it at all before the new handbook edition came out in like 2015. Anyways, we're talking about a distress tolerance skill called effective rethinking that incorporates a lot of mindfulness and all sorts of good stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what we're getting into today. Um, Kate, you want to talk a little bit more about, guess what it is? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. I, sometimes you talk about like the, I don't know, more stuff. I was not ready. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Let's see. And I don't want to step on our toes because we're actually going to... Okay. So we're... Okay. Don't go into the steps, Kate. Don't go into the steps. We're okay. going to be getting to those we're gonna shortly. We're going to together. Yep. Okay. So what is it? Basically, effective rethinking and paired relaxation. Oh, yes. That's, the, that's true. Our, it's, it's important, the paired relaxation. Um, effective rethinking and paired relaxation is essentially something that's a skill for... Well, I mean... <laughs> Hopefully, obviously, distress tolerance, since that's the module we're in. But uh, the sort of two specific kinds of distress that I would say it is the most useful for is one, a stress that is repetitious in your life. Um, I think Michelle's favorite example when she's teaching this is like a, a commute, right? You know, I mean, though, <laughs> in the time of COVID, commutes are somewhere between different and gone <laughs> um, for a lot of people. But Right, commutes are otherwise a great thing. Or, um, you're like, I don't know, every Wednesday there's this meeting at work and it stresses me out every week. Um, or, I don't know. Parenting stuff. Every year. Parenting stuff. Yes, bedtime for kiddos. I don't have any, but I have nephews and I remember, dear God. Um, so something that happens, re you know, repeatedly. It could be daily, it could be weekly, monthly, yearly, doesn't really matter, but just something that you, you know, happens. Uh, on the repeat. The other thing is that it can be a one-off thing, but something you know is coming up. I don't know. Oh my god, I'm going to my cousin's wedding, and I'm going to see uncle such and such, and he drives me out of my mind and stresses me out, and he's creepy, and I hate it. I don't know. Uh, right, something that you can see coming. So those are the two, I would say, types of distresses or stressful events that this is most geared towards helping with. Um, trying to make sure I don't... Right. I don't want to step on the steps. Haha. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am tired, aren't I? <laughs> uh, basically, uh, the idea also, I don't think this is getting too far into the sort of the how to do it or what it is, but, you know, whenever there is any kind of stressful event um, that we are going through or that we're going to go through, we have a story that we tell ourselves about it. Um, and this can be everything from a brief little thing like, oh, I can't stand another commute into the city, right? That's the thing we're telling ourselves about it. Um, two, I don't know, I'm thinking about like the, the cousin's wedding make-believe example. Maybe you write yourself a whole script about how the whole thing is going to go, right? I'm going to show up and then this person's going to corner me and then I'm going to try to escape and that other person's going to follow me to the bar and then this, right? You, maybe you write a whole narrative. 
narrative, right? So it can be everything from a like a one one off short one sentence thing uh, that you tell yourself to a whole story. But either way, what you tell yourself about that event, um, your interpretation, your prediction about it, whatever, um, has a big impact on your level of emotional arousal. Like, what are you going to feel and how intensely are you going to feel it? Um, to an extent, there's probably an amount of that that may be, maybe, unavoidable, but the exact emotions and or the severity of the emotions can definitely be helped by uh, things such as engaging in this skill. So, yep. yeah, does that about cover it without actually going into doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, yeah, just the biggest way that this skill can be helpful is like when you were talking about like that script idea mm -hmm. um and i think back to like our episode about like willingness versus willfulness and i was talking about how like i can write a script in my head for how social situations are gonna go right <laughs> and maybe other people's scripts are not as detailed as mine mine can get pretty detailed and yet i think it's a really good point that you make of like we all probably to some degree or another write scripts in our head our brain does this for a reason like our brain is doing this with good intentions to try to get us prepared and so often what it just does is stress us out <laughs> it gets us prepared for only the worst case and not right. for any other case so yes just ready and yeah. already stressed for the worst thing happening yep and this skill can be really helpful in preparing you and also like helping you feel a sense of empowerment Rather than just like, oh my god, oh my god, this is what it's this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> like, you know, it gives you something to do with that stress. I really feel like so. Um, so there's six steps to the skill, and we're just gonna go through and alternate talking about each step. So the very first step that DBT says for this skill is to write down the prompting event that is often related to distressing emotions and that you want to work on reducing your emotional reactions to. So they just used a lot of, Wordy. yeah, a lot of big words and how well, they, they phrased it. And a preposition and it bothers me. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Um, but basically, I mean, what they're getting at here is think about the thing that, again, like we said in the most recent couple episodes, like observe is always first, right? So notice, think about, what is the event that stresses you out? That's basically what they're getting at. Um, whether it is putting your kid down for a nap, or whether it is your cousin's wedding, or whether it is that weekly Wednesday meeting. What I mean, there could be so many things. Um, but to identify what that thing is for you. And yes, in this step, DBT says, write it down. And sometimes Kate and I talk about shortcuts. I don't know if writing it down is essential. Um, if you want to do this to the letter, you really want to do this skill correctly and get the most bang for your buck, writing it down could be helpful. And if you are going to write it down, I would say write it down in as much detail as you can. Um, but also, like, you can kind of just think about it. <laughs> like, what's the thing that's typically stressful for me? what usually happens, you know, how do things typically play out in this scenario? And just start to kind of think about how things usually go in your mind. That's that's the first step. All right. Step two. Step two. Uh, ask, what must I be telling myself? Uh, so basically, what are my interpretations and thoughts around this event that causes such distress and arousal? So you can write these down. These, so we were talking about a little bit like what is the story we tell ourselves. This is where the script is. And mm -hmm. so, you know, some of the scripts may be short. They have examples like, he hates me. I can't stand this. I can't do this. I'll never make it. I'm out of control. Um, those are nice and brief. Uh, if we were Michelle, we might need a page or three. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're writing it down, you know, make sure you have room uh, if you need it. But also this can be, again, a place that depending on how you feel about it, you might be able to hold this whole process in your head. Uh, but this is the place to really notice, what am I telling myself? I can't stand this commute. The, everyone else on the road is an idiot. Um, one of these days, I'm just gonna, you know, someone's gonna kill me or I'm gonna get in an accident, right? Like, I don't know, 
Uh, my boss hates me. He picks on me every Wednesday in this meeting. Um, I'm sure he's working up to firing me. I, right? Like, what are you telling yourself? What are the what are the what are the thoughts? Um, because you know, thoughts have a really big impact on how we feel, as I'm sure we've talked about in other contexts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's a reason why this situation is stressful for you. <laughs> and your thoughts may play a role in that a little bit. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so definitely play a role, depends on how big it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're they're some they're somewhere in this equation here of why this thing is stressful. Um so then the next thing, step number three, which is a big step in this process it's the halfway point but it says rethink the situation and its meaning in a way that counteracts the thoughts and interpretations that are producing stress and distressing emotions and as you rethink the situation write down as many effective thoughts as you can to replace the stressful thoughts so if you do choose to write this out as dbt recommends um i don't know this is one way that I would maybe recommend writing it out if that's the route you're going to go, right? So you did step one of like writing out the prompting event. And then maybe after you've written out like what tends to happen like in this stressful situation, um, then you can even like split this into like two columns in a way of like then make a column with what Kate was just talking about of like, this is horrible. I'm, you know, I'm why does my commute have to be so long and whatever your thoughts are <laughs> write all those thoughts and then in another column start to write down as many effective thoughts um these can be again anything really um like you know i am capable i can get through this um if it's putting your kid down for a nap eventually like they will go to bed. <laughs> um, this can be, you know, Everyone I has a struggle. I'm not a bad parent because yep. of this. Yep, um, I'm not alone. Like I'm trying my best. It can be as many things as you want to think about. But this is an important spot: is to notice how these new thoughts compare with the thoughts you were thinking. And again, in my opinion, writing this all down is optional, but if you do decide to write this down, that could be one way to compare the thoughts that you've been thinking to the new thoughts that you're trying to come up with is like at a certain point in your paper, <laughs> after you've written down the prompting event, make two columns and compare them that way. I like it. It's sort of like the, um, oh, for goodness sake, Kate, the myth activity from so long ago mm -hmm. right you have the myth and then you have the challenge this is yep. like creating your own challenge to your own myth pretty <laughs> much yeah <laughs> right? so figure out what your myth is and then <laughs> mm -hmm. write your own challenges to it so um when you are in the next step step four when you are which i, I don't know i felt i i apparently am having some, some willfulness today myself i don't know it was silly michelle you're like step three is the halfway point i'm like it's an even number step four could also be considered the halfway point <laughs> Maybe, maybe four is the halfway point. Four is also very important. <laughs> You're in the thick of it now. I just had that thought and I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> like, not halfway. Anyway, whatever. The, uh, step four. When you are not in the stressful prompting event, practice imagining the stressful event. Right? So, uh, if you've been with us up to this point, I've had you do this a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in closing moments, right? Which is just bringing a stressful event to your mind, right? Kind of noticing how you feel, you know, bringing to mind those sort of, it's, you know, the thoughts you might normally have, really just sort of embodying it to a moment, but not when you're in it, right? This is when hopefully you're in a relatively relaxed, relatively calm, sort of safe space. Uh, so, right, bring, bring it, bring the prompting event, there we go, uh, my, it, oh, I can't talk bring the prompting events to mind. There we go. Not hard. Um, and so while you're doing that, this is the uh, paired relaxation, right? This is effective thinking with paired relaxation. Here we are getting to the paired relaxation bit. So while you are breathing in, you want to say to yourself whatever one of your effective uh, self statements are. Uh, so this might be something like you breathe in thinking to yourself, it's not that important. And then as you breathe out, you say something like, so relax. 
while also, you know, like intentionally relaxing any muscle tension, etc. that you notice, right? So if I'm sitting here, I don't know, uh, picturing, yeah, getting my kid down for a nap and like thinking like if I, I have to get it done by exactly noon, like if I have to write exactly at noon, that's the, the end of the world if I don't get the kid down by exactly noon. Uh, you know, I might be able to think to my, you know, bring, bring that to mind and think to myself, five minutes doesn't actually matter. So relax, right, as I exhale. Um, and so that's, that's the thing you want to practice. Now, this is gonna, you know, shift a little bit depending on how much time you have to put into this, depending on how distressing the thing is, so sort of how hard it's gonna be to, to shift your thinking on it. Um, but you can do this from just like, I don't know, when you're sort of heading towards that, if you're heading towards your car for your morning commute, right, you might try just a one-off of this, you know, beforehand, right? This is, about, I don't know, you're, ideally you're practicing this at times that have nothing to do with it as well. But I also think it can sort of lead up to in the moment, right? Beforehand, you're like, you know what? I'm going to live through this. So relax, right? And you can just do one inhale and one exhale, and that's awesome. Um, if on the other hand, you have the time and ability, and it seems like a really hard thing for you to muster, uh, you know, trying to work on, sit there for 10 minutes. Just repeating this to yourself as you breathe in and you breathe out. Um, yeah, I don't know. So give it the time you have, I guess, and mm -hmm. the time that feels necessary, <laughs> even if yep. it's more time than you technically have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think a couple, um, also like important caveats with that one of like, because in step three, they want you to write out as many effective thoughts as you oh, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really important to make sure to pick one from yep. that list um pick one you know you don't want to be like let's say you write out six effective thoughts you know you don't want to be trying to remember all six <laughs> just pick one one that feels the best to you out of your list um and even though like dbt says to say the word relax which is like a pretty good catch-all word um i mean you can pick another word if Calm or let go yeah peace or you know okay or... yep exactly you can pick lots of other things especially if i don't know maybe this applies to some people maybe it doesn't but i feel like the word relax can be very similar to calm down mm -hmm. sometimes which we talked about in a q a episode how <laughs> calm down can be triggering and might not get you the effect that you want and especially if you grew up in a house where they're like oh come on just relax like you know it could be a trigger word so p make sure that you're picking a word similar to relax <laughs> that like feels good to you um and i yeah i actually really like what you just said kate of like it's okay you know or like it could be something like let go or it could be yeah um other ways of thinking about it also i guess yeah. i was gonna say i like your like pick one but like pick one but also if it doesn't feel like it's doing anything you can also shuffle to try another yes one. yep right like don't don't be don't be don't lock know, yourself in or on on you know on random but don't lock yourself into one because it's the one you picked right right like if it doesn't feel like it's doing much in the moment yeah yeah, yeah totally because yeah you do you want to pick a statement that doesn't just sound nice you want to pick something that like you really believe like that you have buy-in with yes that you really feel because otherwise in the moment when you're in that stressful situation it's not gonna stand up <laughs> um yeah, so after you have, um, so step five, you know, Kate was just talking about how important it is to do practicing when you're not in the stressful event. And basically step five says, keep practicing every chance you get until you have mastered the strategy. Okay, DBT. Um, here's what I will say. Like, though this is a skill that's really important i mean lots of dbt skills are important to practice when you're not in the stressful situation as kate has emphasized <laughs> that's really important this one is especially important to practice when you're not in the stressful situation um i take a little bit of issue where dbt says keep practicing every chance you get because I mean, DBT doesn't know your life. DBT doesn't know how busy you are. <laughs> like, you don't know me. <laughs> right. Like, hi, what's, what's that really going to look like? Um, I mean, best times to practice would probably be before bed at night. Um, that can help us integrate information while we are sleeping. 
Um, you can also think to yourself first thing in the morning, but this is also something that you can practice while you're driving, you know, like to work or home from work. Like this is something that, you know, you can practice this in the shower. Like this is a nice kind of like, you don't have to put everything on pause to practice this. All you have to do is just kind of briefly bring to mind the stressful situation, breathe in, say your effective self-statement, breathe out and say relax or some other word. It doesn't take very long. It's pretty quick. Um, but I take, I take issue with that when they're like, keep practicing every chance you get. Like, okay. Um, you know, pick and choose what that looks like for you. Also when it says until you've mastered the strategy, but it's not really clear on what that means or like what that looks like to have quote unquote, mastered the strategy, which you won't really know until you're in the stressful situation. And then you're able to do the breathing in, saying the statement, breathing out, saying relax in the moment to see if that actually helps you. You won't really know until you try it out in the stressful situation. Um, but I don't know. I would say that one way to kind of know, like, okay, I'm, I'm really getting this, um, is if you find yourself um, feeling maybe more noticeable relaxation when you do it. Maybe at first it might feel like you're just kind of saying the things to yourself. I mean, you are. <laughs> you are saying the things to yourself. Like, But if you actually notice like, oh, now I've started to do it and I do genuinely feel a little better when I do it. Like I actually physically feel myself relaxing a little bit. That could be a good sign. Um, and also depending on what your self statement is, um, how easy it is to remember, you want to make sure you've got that locked in, <laughs> um, so that you can bring it to mind immediately and saying, yeah, relax or whatever word you pick. Like you want that statement to feel like you could bring that to mind when you're under, you know, a lot of mental strain. Like you want to make sure you're not going to forget. So again whatever that looks like for you however many times of practicing that takes um but that could be another good sign of like okay i could say this phrase in my sleep now i've got it i know what it is <laughs> i'm kind of ready to go so that's what it means for step five keep practicing nice and michelle inadvertently i think just totally revealed step six which is you know uh do it yeah i, had, I know i was looking ahead and i was like come on dbt <laughs> now do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, you're not going to know uh, if you've mastered it until you try and put it into practice. So step six is put it into practice, right? When the situation, the stressful situation is actually occurring, um, practice the effective rethinking and relaxation, right? So this might be during your commute. It might be in your head during the Wednesday meeting. It might be as you're walking in from the parking lot for the cousin's wedding, right? <laughs> like actually putting the, what is it, the rubber to the road? Mm -hmm. Right, putting the rubber to the road and and test driving it um i don't know i probably say this about most things but i will say don't necessarily give up on the skill if the first time you try and use it in an actual stressful situation it doesn't do a huge amount right because there's a couple of different things one that's the first time you're trying a thing what's the last time you were perfect at something the first time you tried it um for me i think that's never um but <laughs> also you know you're you're still feeling it out maybe the phrase that you picked when you weren't in the stressful situation felt really good and really helpful, but then in the face of the actual stressful situation, you find that it just doesn't hold up the way you thought it would and something else might have been more helpful, right? I guess it's just allow yourself space for trial and error or a little bit of failure um, without, you know, harshly judging yourself or necessarily totally throwing the skill out the window. Um, I also think as this may be just me projecting everywhere, but as silly as the like, so relax or so let go or so whatever, right? And like relaxing your muscles is maybe silly as it sounds to be doing that. I do think that this is one of the skills that requires real full participation to do the thing that it's designed to do. Um, effective rethinking and period relaxation is one that's harder, I think. Michelle, you can tell me if you disagree, but I think it's harder to get good results from half-assing this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to do all the parts yep, of, all like, parts. you've got to, to practice out, and... Yep, yep. And practice it when you're not in the moment. Like, you have to kind of do the whole thing. So, if you're, like, I don't know, walking up to that cousin's wedding and 
walking up to that cousin's wedding. It's the first time you've thought of it. You're like, all right, Kate and Michelle told me to do this thing. Uh, and then you try. I hate to break it to you, but I will be very happy for you if it does anything. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, so, right, give it, give it a chance by doing all the things, I guess, is the, the long and the short. This one, this one is going to be most useful on, on a very physiological level, right? A lot of this mm -hmm. is basically teaching your body to associate calmness and relaxation with this stressful event rather than fear, anger, anxiety. Yeah, whatever the stressful emotions are for you. So. Yep, exactly. And the other thing that is probably really important to mention here is exactly what you just said, Kate. Like, the goal here is that you feel more relaxed in this stressful situation. And I think back to when we were talking about cope ahead as part of the ABC skill. Cope ahead isn't imagining in your mind how the perfect scenario goes to you. You know, we are not saying that you're going to do this skill and you're going to fall in love with your commute and your Wednesday meetings aren't going to suck anymore and your kid's going to go down to sleep immediately. Nope. <laughs> it's probably going to go about the same, but the goal is that you're going to feel different. And there is the potential here that when you feel different, you may get different responses from people, right? Like your kid could pick up. Yeah, your kid could pick up that like, you know, oh, like, you know, mom or dad's feeling like they don't seem super stressed out or, you know, whatever it is. And there could be some positive like feedback loop stuff that happens there. Um, but the goal is, you know, this is not a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully it makes these stressful situations in your life like a little more bearable to where you feel more in control and yeah just less stressed and less overwhelmed that's that's the biggest goal of this um yeah. feel mm -hmm. better yep yeah cool all right well um I don't know. Part of me is debating. I guess we should maybe summarize just real quick the steps one more time. We'll post this in the Facebook group so you guys can look back at it. Um, but basically, write down or think about the event that's stressful for you. Ask yourself what you're telling yourself about it. And then rethink what you could tell yourself as a more effective thought. And then when you're not in the stressful situation, breathe in. Say that new thought, breathe out, and say relax while you think about the stressful situation playing out. And then keep practicing that until you get a chance to do it in the situation. And closing moment's really going to help today. <laughs> yeah, no, we're just going to practice flat out. We're just going to do this shit. Yep, we're going to practice. So we're going to build in an opportunity for you to get this ball rolling. Um, but before we do that, um, yeah, I mean, your homework is going to be to practice this i mean that's probably pretty straightforward um so yeah start your practicing figuring out what your stressful situation is that you encounter pretty regularly and start making this shift um so that you can find a new statement to tell yourself and start practicing your breathing when you're not in the stressful situation um email us dbtmepodcast at gmail.com um consider donating to our patreon at patreon.com slash dbt and me and check out our etsy shop um just search for dbt and me when you go to etsy.com and give us a rating or write us a review on apple podcasts or any other platform that you use to listen to us if it has that option for you nice you're getting much smoother at it i, I am i'm going faster it actually feels like i don't know it feels I good. Like, it. guys, we're doing things. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I just know the first time we're all like, this is awkward. I don't know about The first time I talked forever, I also explained it all. But, it's yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, I noticed that you're getting smoother and more comfortable. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Are we ready? Are yes. Going? I'm excited. It? It's Let's a good thing it. to practice. I know, it's funny. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how many of you know this. I think we've said it before. A, an incredible number of these are me flying by the seat of my pants um, in the moment. Uh, like a huge number. Um, but <laughs> I was realizing, like, I won't know what anybody's thought is. So I'm anyway, this is also more than you would think for having the exact steps of what I'm going to tell you to do in front of me. <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants. You've got it, Kate. Together. You can we do it. This. All right. Get comfortable. Wow, that's
that sounds really like <laughs> Yeah, comfortable now. Uh, no, find a comfortable position. All uh, right, that can be, uh, you know, sitting or standing or laying down or whatever feels good to you and to your body at this moment. Just something that you can maintain for the next you know, minute or five or ten and uh, feels good to your body and, and maintainable. So. As per usual, we're going to begin just by tuning into our breathing. You don't have to breathe any more deeply or any more slowly than we are naturally. This is just about noticing the natural rhythm of our breath. Noticing where we feel it the most. And just letting that sensation and that rhythm of our ever-present breath, letting that bring us into our bodies the present moment. When you feel settled and in your body and in the moment, I do want you to bring to mind something that stresses you out. This can be something that happens regularly in your life, or just a event that's hanging out on the horizon that you know is coming down the pike. Allow yourself to Bring that situation really fully into your imagination. What stresses you out about this? What's hard? What's... What are you thinking when you think about that experience? What are you telling yourself? Do you have a really detailed script of exactly what's going to go wrong over the entire course of that event? Or maybe you're just saying discouraging stuff to yourself, shooting on yourself or canting all over the place, whatever it is. It's not about having judgment for yourself or how you've been talking about this thing with yourself. It's just about noticing. It's about giving yourself the opportunity to know yourself better in this moment and to notice how what you've been saying might be contributing to how stressed out you are about this event um, or pattern in your life. And now take a moment and I'd like to invite you to think of at least one different way to think about this event. This might take the form of reassuring yourself, like, this sucks but I can do it. Um, or I'm going to make it through, or no matter how bad this is, I'm going to come out the other side. This could be, I don't know, an, an acknowledgement that maybe this thing that is stressing you out isn't as big of a deal as it first seems like it is. Uh, it's, you know, this isn't as important as I make it out to be, or this too shall pass. Something that reminds you that it's temporary. And that it's something that you possibly already have or regularly do survive or conquer or make it through. Or something that just seems really urgent in the moment, but isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. So I'm actually going to be quiet for a moment here and give you a chance to really subtle on what thought you want to use for practicing this skill today. Something that is more effective and something that helps to reduce your stress and anxiety around this situation rather than amp it up. Hopefully you have that thought firmly in your mind, because now we're going to practice with it. I'm going to model a rhythm for breathing in and breathing out, but please feel free to do this on whatever rhythm feels safe and comfortable and relaxing for your own body. You can follow along with me if that feels good, or just go at your own pace, whatever works best for you. All I will say is that 
as you breathe out, do also try and concentrate on relaxing any muscle tension that you have. Anything that might be tense or stiff or stressed in your body while you're thinking about the stressful event. Do work on letting go of that tension as you exhale. So when I say breathe in, I'm going to ask you to think your new and more effective statement. And then I will say, so relax, but you can fit in with any word that feels better for you as you breathe out to relax. So here we go. Breathe in. So relax. Breathe in. So relax. Breathe in. So relax. Breathe in. So relax. One last time. Breathe in. So relax. Now you can return to your normal pace of breathing, whatever feels natural and comfortable for you. And I'd like you to just check in. How do you feel? How's your body? How's your heart? How's your brain? Does that new thought help you feel more relaxed, feel more comfortable, feel safer or less stressed out while you're thinking about this? prompting event to this stressful situation. If not, that's okay. That was a really short practice. If it helped, that's wonderful. And if it didn't, consider picking a new phrase or giving it a little bit longer to practice next time. But for now, I want you to go ahead and let go of your thoughts of this stressful situation. You might even take a moment to replace it. Think about... What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite ice cream? Take a second to really think about something that makes you smile. Makes you a little cheerful for a moment as you let go of that stressful or distressing situation. Whenever you feel ready, go ahead and, you know, rotate your shoulders, stretch your body, do whatever you need to do to kind of come back into the present moment, into your body into the room. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. So much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. To learn more about us and the DBT skills we're teaching each week, join our Facebook group. Simply log in to your Facebook profile.